And I mean, really mean it from the depths of your heart. If you will, please, for a few minutes, turn to Psalm 4. Psalm 4. This is on page 600 in the Old Scofield Bible. Page 600, Psalm 4, verse number 1. Hear me when I call, O God, of my righteousness. Thou hast enlarged me when I was in distress. Have mercy upon me and hear my prayer. O ye sons of men, how long will ye turn my glory into shame? How long will ye love vanity and seek after leasing? That word leasing means lying or falsehood, selah. But God, that the, but, but know that the Lord hath set apart him that is godly for himself. The Lord will hear when I call unto him. Stand in awe and sin not. Commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still, Selah. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. There be many that say, Who will show us any good? Lord, lift thou up the light of thy countenance upon us. Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than the time that their corn and their wine is ceased and increased. I will both lay, uh, lay me down in peace and sleep, for thou, Lord, only make me to dwell in safety. I want to talk about an awesome benefactor, as we is seen here in this psalm. This psalm is on every prayer list, I guess, around, or every heart that prays daily. Like all men, the psalmist sees how many troubles and uh, uh, things that come in life every day, something different comes our way. Things that are contrary, things that are adverse, and things that we dread, things that we don't really appreciate, don't enjoy, we'll put it that way. Worldly people do not sympathize with us at all about our profession of faith. The world doesn't like us. The world doesn't care about what we think about the Bible or about Jesus or about the blood. They don't know anything about this. And I'm not condemning them. The Bible even says He didn't come to condemn, but to save. So He came to offer salvation to those that are ignorant today. So we really wonder sometimes just how long God is going to allow wicked-hearted people to harass the born-again believer. Now the psalmist realizes that God has definitely made a distinction between the godly and the ungodly. He has faith here that God will hear him when he calls. Now there are several blessed thoughts here, and I want to mention them very hurriedly in the next few minutes. First of all, we see his awe in verse number four, stand in awe and sin not. He realizes the awfulness of sin, and he trembles as it were. Grace operating in the heart begins with condemnation or conviction of the heart of sin. We feel like the prodigal when he came to his, himself in the hog pens of life and came back to his father's house. He said, I, I am not worthy to be called thy son. That's the way we need to feel sometime and the way we do feel sometime. He longs for something from the father because he's realized that he can find nothing out there in the world. The world will use you and abuse you and throw you away. The world, young people listening to me, the world has so many things out there that allures and that will attract and cause that young, eager spirit, and that, uh, that young, stout body of yours to get involved. Let's get something exciting going. And the world will just keep on drawing you and drawing you and trying to get you to come along. Don't be fooled. Uh, you will find out later on that the world was lying. The devil was lying. The demons were influencing you. And you will find yourself in a bad way. So young people, let me urge upon you, listen to me, every young person in this house of God, do you love Jesus Christ right now? Have you ever been saved, young person? Have you ever really been saved? All right, if you're saved, you belong to God. Now let me ask you something. Will you do this? I'll die before you ever get to be a, a real old person yourself, but promise me before God, I'm going to live for Jesus. I think about you, children. I think about you, young people. I pray for you. I pray for my own family. I pray for your family. I pray for all of you young people. 
that God, when you get up 16, 17, 18 years old, you'll be the sweet, loving little Christian that loves Jesus that you are right now. Why can't you just maintain that good Christian lie all the days of your life? And once you get through this rough spot of adolescence, when you get through that and get on, on down, the world, down the road a little ways, you're going to realize, boy, that preacher told me the truth. You're going to be glad that you didn't get involved in all this liquor and beer and the hell that's going on in our world right now. And they make it look so good. And they make it, uh, you know, they draw these young people into their net. They're tricking you, young person. Now listen to me. Listen to me. Live for Jesus. Love Him. Don't be ashamed of Him. Praise God. You can be exciting. You can be attractive. You can be somebody that's noticeable uh, as we want to be noticed. And somebody says, well, you know, uh, you have to do this or that to be attracted by the opposite sex. Let me tell you young people something, boys and girls, God made you to be attracted to each other. Hey, and you know what? You don't have to get naked to be attracted to each other. Can I be plain with you? Can I just be plain with you? You don't have to take your clothes off to be attracted. God made you to be attracted to each other. Or how else would a man ever ask for a date? How else would you ever accept a date? How else would you ever long for a date if God didn't make you attracted to that boy or that girl? That's not a sin. That's not a sin. But whenever you go beyond that and get into the other ram now, you start sinning. And you know where I'm going. Stay away from it. Don't let anybody take advantage of you in any way. My friend, God is too good to give up right now, to give up on and to say, I'm going to go out and live and sow my wild oaks. That's the most dangerous thing you've ever done. I'm uh, not worthy. One of these days you'll come back and you'll say like the prodigal, I'm not worthy to be called a son. I'm so down. The world didn't have anything for me. I looked for everything that I could find, everything I wanted. I didn't find a thing. I ended up in a hog pen feeding hogs. Is that where you want to end up? Well, stay with Jesus and you'll never end up there. You'll never go there. I'm telling you, if you'll stay with Jesus Christ, you'll never be sorry. Hallelujah for the Savior today. He'll keep you in the hull of His hand. Uh, he'll bless you. Uh, he'll give you a life worth living. Hallelujah. And you'll live, and when you get old, you'll say, I thank God I didn't fall into that trap. I thank God I didn't. Now listen, praise God. I'm not condemning anybody. Some of you have already fallen into those traps. And you, God will forgive you. Sure, you've come out of them. You've come back. Bless you. I commend you on that. So if you've already made the mistake, don't think that I'm condemning you and putting you down. I'm not, except for the grace of God. There go I. Amen. I go, there goes that old drunk staggering down the street. And that'd be Sammy K if it had not been for the grace of God. I was headed that way. Let me tell you, young people, I don't even know what I'm preaching today. I don't, I'm not preaching my sermon altogether. I'm just burdened for my young people, and I want you to know Jesus is still the Savior, and He'll keep you. Uh, he's the greatest thing that ever happened to you. Stay with Jesus now, and you'll be all right. My friend, this, this man found out it was not what he thought it was. And if you're lost today, listen, lost person here or there by streaming, if you're lost today, there is a loving God. Hallelujah. There is a loving God that is wanting to save your soul right now and give you eternal life. I don't care where you are and how bad you've been. Jesus is ready to save your soul backslider out there been saved by the grace of God but you've wandered away from him you've backslidden on God well I want to tell you there's a loving father <laughs> hallelujah standing with outstretched arms saying come on back son come on back daughter come on back to me I'll restore you I love you we studied in Sunday school this morning Boy, I'll tell you right now, the Savior never takes his eye off of his beloved. He never turns away from his beloved as far, his beloved as, far as losing her. Even though he walks away with some blessings because she refused him, he's always watching for her to come back so he can bestow upon her. So then, I may not get through with this because I'm, I'm getting kind of soggy here. But... <clears throat> That's the awe. What an awesome 
benefactor we have right here. I want you to notice the meditation. He said, commune with your own heart upon your bed and be still. Numbers 32, 23, be sure your sin will find you out. This doesn't mean that everybody is going to find out your sin, but it'll catch up with you. And you'll know it. And you know how bad it is. Be sure your sin will find you out. You go out and say, I'm going to sin. I don't care what the Bible says. I'm going to have myself a fling. I'm going to have myself a good time. All right, be sure. I mark, mark it now. It'll come back on you. Someday, somewhere out there, it'll smack you right in the face. So when one meditates upon his sinful life, he'll be convicted. No one knows your heart like you do. Commune with your own heart, he said. Turn the light of scrutiny on your own self, on your way. And nobody can do it for you. Think about yourself and your spiritual condition. Think about it. At night, literally speaking, physically, when you are in your bed, <laughs> excuse me, think while you're there on that bed of yourself. What condition am I in? Am I saved or am I lost? You're one or the other. And then at night, spiritually speaking, when all is dark, you're going through dark experiences, spiritually speaking. My friend, meditate on yourself. Why am I going through this darkness? It's not God's fault. I need to do something. I need to read my Bible. I need to confess my sin. I need to get right with the Lord. So many people are trying to sleep at night. Not everybody, but many of them. But sleep flees from them. I talk with them. And my friend, troubles keep souls from resting. I have talked with people who are afraid to go to sleep. I've had people say, Preacher, I'm afraid to go to sleep. I'm afraid I'll die, and I don't know for sure if I'm going to go to heaven. That's miserable. You're not still whenever you're that way. You're frustrated. The devil's got you where he wants you. Whether you're saved or unsaved, you need to get to God. I mean, you need to talk to God about this. So some toss to and fro. They turn and they turn and they turn. And those, many of those people have healthy bodies. They're not diseased. They're not physic, in physical pain. They are not in, uh, interrupted by noise. And they are not cold. They're not hot. They're not uncomfortable as far as the temperature is concerned. Yet they're tossed to and fro, to and fro, turning over, turning over. They can't get rid. They can't get still. You say, well, I'm not troubled like that. I am thank God you're not. And you better thank God you're not. Because there are plenty of people out there that are tossed. Keep on thinking until you can be still, still and at peace. You know where you can find that stillness and that sleep is when you and Jesus are like that in fellowship. When you're walking with Him. So we have an invitation given here. We have the awe, we have the meditation. Then we have the approach in verse number five. Offer the sacrifices of righteousness and put your trust in the Lord. Come to Jesus, in other words, come to Him now. John 6, 37, Him that cometh to me I will in no wise cast out. There is mercy with the Lord. When Israel came to the tabernacle in the wilderness, they brought their sacrifices with them. They would place their hands on the head of the sacrifice and confess their sins before God. Men today need to come to Jesus with a broken and a contrite heart. We don't have to bring animal sacrifices to point to the Calvary. We can look back at Calvary and see that the Supreme Lamb has already died. He's already been sacrificed for every sin in this building. Every sin in this world, Jesus paid for it in full. So the sacrifices of God are a broken heart. Do you not, my friend, want to reveal your sin to Him? Don't tell me about it. Don't tell anybody else about it. Nobody needs to know your sin. If they know about it, that's fine. They can live with it the best way they can. But it's none of their business. You tell God about it. That's all you have to do is tell God about your sin. You don't have to go around telling everybody about it. Praise God, just tell God. He's the only one that can help you anyway. Now, forsake your sins. 
and look to Jesus. Proverbs 28, 13, He that covereth his sins shall not prosper, but whoso confesseth and forsaketh them shall have mercy. Verse 7 right here says, Thou hast put gladness in my heart more than in the time that their corn and their wine increased. In other words, when the sinner stands in awe at the greatness of God and his offer to men, he becomes convicted, and if he'll get saved or give his heart over to God or get uh, restored, and many, my friend, will do that. They'll submit themselves to God and trust in God's words. Now, when one is born again, his actions are different. He believes God. He worships God. He prays to God. He rejoices in God. What a great benefactor. Over in Psalm 92, and I'll hasten, it is a good thing to give thanks unto the Lord and to sing praises. My goodness alive. Y'all were just singing praises unto God a while ago. Are we in the will of God? I'm reading it out of the Bible. I'm reading it out of His own Word. It's right. He said it's good to give thanks to God, to sing praises unto His name, O Most High, to show forth thy loving kindness in the morning and thy faithfulness every night. He, of course, his spiritual blessings are greater than, a, than full barns and overflowing vats. I mean, if you raised a crop and it was just bulging out, your barns were about to burst because you are so prosperous. Hey, when you get this peace of God in your heart, it's more valuable than that kind of prosperity. This world is good to prosper in, and we're prospering, and thank God we are. Many of us have quite a bit. Some of us don't have quite as much. But this joy causes the believer to sleep soundly and peacefully. Our approach to God is one of faith, and we understand that He has received us, saved us, forgiven us, and promised us, as I live, saith the Lord, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way and live. Wicked person out there, if you haven't trusted Jesus, God said, I would not delight in you dying and going to hell, but I would delight if you turned and you started living for Jesus Christ. What benefits are set forth in this scripture and many, many others? We have access to God there in verse 1. We have assurance right there in verse 3. We have peace and quietness at bedtime in verse 7. We have praise and worship at verse 5. We have preservation of the light of God's presence in verse 6. Hallelujah. What a benefactor. Now these are the things which God gives to them who are His beneficiaries. So are these not of more worth than the riches of this world? Trust this great benefactor today if you haven't already. And I will both lay me down, he said, in peace and sleep. For thou, Lord, only makest me dwell in safety. Let's stand to our feet and bow our heads. And if you're here today without Christ, you can be saved today, right now. The altar's open. We'll show you how to be saved. And if you're there and you're by streaming and you're not saved, you can call upon the name of the Lord right now. God will restore you. He'll save you. Whatever you need, God is ready. Matter of fact, God's the one that offered. I'm just, I'm just delivering the message. God's already given the revelation. He's already told us what to do. So some are coming to the altar for one reason or another. Help yourself. If you want to come and talk to God about your situation, whatever it may be, you just feel free to do so. God's listening. We're in God's house. The Holy Spirit has already shown up. He's already blessed. He was here when we got here. Hallelujah. Hey, wherever you go, He's already there. Amen. He's in our heart today. The Holy Spirit dwells in your heart and mine. So if you need Jesus for any reason, the altar is open for you, and we invite you to come. Our Heavenly Father, we're so thankful today for the great benefactor that you are. We're so thankful when we read about the blessings that God has prepared for us. It absolutely thrills our soul. Father, it lifts our spirit. It causes us, Lord, to want to rejoice and to praise you and to thank you, Lord, over and over again for your greatness. We thank you for all the many blessings that they have sung about this morning. 
and most of all your great self, God, you're our God, you're our Father. I'm thankful that your love is eternal and everlasting and almighty. Thank God nobody can take the love of God away from us. And nobody can take us away from the love of God because we're sealed with your dear Holy Spirit. Father, bless these folk that have come to pray for whatever reason, God, you know all about it. We ask you that you undertake for them and encourage their heart and help them to accept forgiveness or restoration or whatever they stand in need of. And Lord, if someone needs to be saved and they don't know how, help them to call us and let us know so we can show them how to be saved. We invite sinners to come and give their heart to Jesus Christ. Thank you for what you've done, for what you're doing, and what you're going to do, because we trust you. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen, amen.